<laughs> Hallelujah. What a privilege. What a privilege. What an honor. What a joy divine. <laughs> <laughs> Be back with you. Planting the heavens in the earth. The Lord is speaking. The Lord is moving in the midst of his people, even when we don't realize it. And he's so faithful and so consistent. He is always, always encouraging us, lifting us, loving us, aligning us, correcting us. He's faithful. He's faithful. He gave us his word. And guess what? He's going to perform it. We're not going to perform it. He's going to perform his word. It's not by might, nor by power, but by his spirit. And when I say we're not going to perform it, I'm not going to say we're not going to cooperate and come into alignment with him. But I'm saying this initiative and everything going forward concerning kingdom, concerning the Lord, concerning holiness, concerning transformation, concerning sanctification, it's going to be done by the spirit of the Lord. It won't be because I'm grinding my teeth together trying to do it right. It won't be works of the flesh and it won't be works of the law. It will be works of faith of the spirit. Amen, 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 amen. I'm excited. Again, I'm glad to be back with you. Again, I just rejoice in the Lord. I just rejoice in the Lord. Not so much my circumstances. Not so much my circumstances. And yet these circumstances actually help to get me grounded and get me established. Did you hear that? The circumstances help mature me. Sometimes we can rattle off the scripture like a, like a, like a, 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 a um, um, uh, What's that gun? It's just sometimes we can machine rattle gun. off scripture like a machine gun. Yes. And we haven't tested it ourselves. We are good salesmen. Mm -hmm. We're good salesmen. But we haven't tested the equipment. We haven't tested the product. And so when the, the situations and circumstances come against us, it's so we can test it. So that now when I tell about the word, now when I tell, I've got something under my belt. And again, I don't have to have something under my belt. We used to have a stupid, stupid saying we would say in church that you can't tell God, nobody God can heal unless you've been sick. What kind of stupid stuff is that? I can tell you God can heal whether I ever been sick. You know why? Because he can heal. He is the healer. Well, we to, we, in the church, we've said some dumb stuff. I'm praying for an awakening that we'll stop all this stuff that's causing division and just, just lies, just lies. And go ahead and begin to test the word and become one with the word and one in agreement with the word. I'm getting out of the way. Pastor Edna is back. She's with us today. She is our planter. And I'm going to move and let her have the floor. The Lord has placed something awesome in her heart and in her mouth. And I want her to release this. I want some of it. I want you to have some of it. I want us to have, I want the world to hear and receive this word I was saying to her a while ago, I'm excited about the word that you have for us, for God's people. I said, some folk uh, don't even know they're God's people, but they're God's people. And there's a word from the Lord. Yeah. Pastor Edna, thank you for being back with us. Appreciate you. Love you. You look so beautiful. I love that haircut, girl. I love, I love it. I love it. Let me release you and let you share what God has given you for us for such a time as this. Welcome. Thank you, Pastor Faye. It's so good to be back on Zoom today and been able to share the word of God with those that are listening all over the world today. Um, I believe that the Lord is doing such amazing things in this hour. Even though there's chaos all around us, God is still God and he is still showing himself mighty and strong that he is. Uh, today, as I had began to seek the Lord about being able to share today, my heart was so excited. I have just been bubbling over for the last few weeks, just uh, anxious in my spirit to share today what the Holy Spirit revealed to me. And like I said many times before, the Holy Spirit has spoke to me uh, in the wee hours of the morning when I was asleep, when all things were still and silent, he spoke so plainly and so clear. And I believe that this word today that I'm gonna share with you is so plainly, it came to me so plainly and so clear from the voice of the Lord. 
And uh, I just want to just stop for a minute and I want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for sharing with me what was on your heart at that moment and that I can be able to share to your people what you are, what you were feeling and what you were thinking. And today I just give you praise and I give you honor for it all in your precious name. I pray. Amen. And amen. Uh, I just want to say welcome to all of you that are out there on stream today listening in. I pray that you have an ear to hear what the Spirit will say today and take heed to it because it's something that we fail to do so many times. And I believe God wants us to know what we're doing so we can do better, you know, so we can improve better and do better in doing better we'll be able to reach more to do better for his kingdom. And uh, if, I could, uh, if I could put a title on this word, I just wanna say, uh, this is what he spoke to me in that wee morning. He said, a call to remembrance to the faithfulness of God. You know, and I stopped when I, I heard that, I heard him say that. And I stopped, I said, a call to remembering, to remember, a call to remember of his faithfulness. And, you know, I got to thinking, you know, I said, Lord, so many times we fail. We fail in that. We fail to remember about your faithfulness. So today I want to share what he put in my spirit. When I was seeking the Lord for this word to share, I heard the spirit of the Lord say, call them into remembrance of who I am. You know, he said, call them and remind them of who I am. God is faithful. God is true. God will hold fast to his promises. Whatever he promised you, I want you to know and I want you to know that is listening out there today that he will hold fast to what he promised you. He will not deceive. God is not a deceiver. What he say he'll do, he will do. He will not promise or fail to perform. He is able to perform everything he has spoken to you. He will not begin anything which he will not perfect and finish. God never starts something and don't finish. How many times in our lives have we as people of God began something or say God said that I'm to do this or I'm to go here or I am to, to work this and we get in the middle of it and we fail, we, we quit, we give up. But he is not a God that will begin something and not complete it. God is calling us to remember it. So many times in life, we forget what's really important about God. What is really important to him is that we remember that he is God that is faithful. And when he says something too often, we, uh, we get in the middle, right in the middle of it. Right in the middle of when God spoke something to us, he might have told you to go to Africa. And right in the middle of it, when it got really seemed to be getting harder and harder to see that thing coming to pass, you ready to, just to throw in the towel. You ready to just give up and say, I don't think I heard God. No, you heard God but you just not fail to fully trust him and, and know that he's faithful to what he told you. And God, so, so, so I want to say that. I want to say that again. So often we get in right in the middle of it and we get off course and go into a wrong direction. The devil wants to pull you in the wrong direction. He wants you to pull you in the direction where you not believe what he said that he was going to do. We begin to act out of a different character. We take on a whole different character, not the character of God, 
but we take on a whole different character. Walking in unbelief, walking in fear, walking in doubt. I mean, these are not the characteristics of a true believer. We, we take on these characteristics when we fail to believe that he is faithful. But he is calling us back into remembrance. Come on, remember, if he done it once, can he not do it again? Can he not perform what he said he would do? He's proven to you time and time again. I don't know about you, but many, many times when he would tell me to get up and go into the nations and I would not even have two nickels to rub together. But I know that he was faithful. I know that if he did it once, he will surely show up a second time and a third time and a fourth time. So I know that he is faithful. And even as I was listening to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit led me to these words in Limitation 3, 22 and 23. The steadfast love of the Lord never cease. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Great is his faithfulness. You know, Pastor Faye, I, I, I pondered on that. I pondered on that because I thought, you know, so many times he has been so rich and so real to me. And it was because of his faithfulness. In Hebrew, he says in Hebrew 11, God's faithfulness. I'm talking about a God. He told me, he told me remind them who I am. Remind them who I am. In Hebrew, he said God's faithfulness is both who he is and what he does. His faithfulness is who he is and what he does. In Deuteronomy 32, God's character remains absolutely flawless. There's no fault in his faithfulness. In Psalms 36, God's faithfulness is immeasurable. It's immeasurable. No limit. There is no limit to God's faithfulness. In 2 Timothy 2, when our faith grows weak or even fail, God remains true to his promises to save us us through Christ Jesus. When hardships and suffering come into our lives, it is easy to question God's faithfulness. And I believe that's where a lot of us has been. A lot of you that is out there listening today, I believe that's where you are today. I don't believe God gave me this to just be saying something, but he's trying to speak to somebody today in your hardships, in your suffering times. It is easy for you to question God's faithfulness, but I'm here today to tell you, look back. Take a minute and look back where he was faithful to you. And know that that same God that was faithful then will be faithful now. I like what Peter says. Peter says, tell us to stay committed to God. We must stay committed. We can't be the up and down wishy-washy type of people. We got to know whatever he says, he's able to do it. He's able to perform it. I, I like this saying even more. If it ain't, he is still the creator. He can create anything he wants. He can create it for you. He can make it anew. I love it because when he left, when he gave his life on that cross, he left his body. The spirit of God left his body to make us new, to make all things new, to make all things new for us. I must remind you that our God is trustworthy. He's trustworthy and faithful to his word. 
He's trustful. He's not a God that will lie. He's not a God that will back down on what he said. God's faithfulness means that everything he says and does remain, it is, it is certain. Everything he does and he said is certain. He is 100% reliable, 100% of the time. So if he's 100% reliable, he's 100% of the time, all the time. He's 100%. He does not fail. He does not forget. He does not falter. He does not change. And he does not disappoint. He says what he means. I love this. He says what he means and means what he says. And he will do everything that he said he will do. This is important for us to remember in this day and time. It's very important for us to remember that what he tells you he's going to do, he is going to do what he told you he's going to do. Even though when it seems so impossible to you, it's not impossible to him. Because he's a God of no limits. He's a God of no limits. There is no limit to what our God can do if we have faith in him to believe that he is who he say he is. I think that's the thing right there, Pastor Faye, that many struggle with is to believe that he is who he say he is. He is everything he said he is and more to me. He's more, he's more than that. He's more than a healer. He's more than a deliverer. He's more than a way maker. Oh, he's more than a blind mind I see. He can make, he's more than that to me. He's more than that. God's faithfulness is important because it means that we can trust him. And when he say that he is going to do something, he's faithful is at the core, his faithfulness is at the core of his nature. It's at the core of his nature. He is faithful. There is nothing about him that ain't faithful. There's nothing about him that's not faithful. I know sometimes you may feel like God is mad. Oh, I know somebody out there. God must be mad at me. That's why he allowed this thing to happen. He, no, it, no, we got to go back. We got to go back and look. Mm -mm. No, it's not because he allowed it to happen. What did you do? What did you not do? Ask your own self that question. God is faithful. And I know that sometimes you may feel like God is mad at you. You have pain, you have suffering. I don't understand, you know, and that's the question sometimes, uh, Pastor Faye, that people ask me, okay, if God knows that I'm in pain, why is he le leaving me in this pain? Why is he leaving me in this, in this suffering that I'm going through? I know there's times that you pray and you didn't seem to get no answer and your hope is all gone. But where's your faith? Faith is not something you can point at faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You may not always see it right when you think you ought to see it. It may not always be right there, but faith will tell you to hold on because he is faithful and he will come through. Yet in the midst of all of it, somehow the Holy Spirit Sometimes when we're ready to give up and we're ready to faint and we're ready just to throw in the towel, the Holy Spirit is able to break through that mindset and let you know that God is faithful. You've got someone that is working with you, that's working for you. The Holy Spirit is your helper. He is the one that will help you to hold tight to what God is saying. God will not lie. He will not retreat on what he said he was going to do. If he promised you a healing, 
your healing is established already. It is an already finished work done deal. It's a done deal. If he promised you a trip to the Africa region, then he's going to open it up. He's going to grant you favor. You'd be surprised how he does it because he don't think like you think. He don't move like you move, but he does move in faith because he knows what he said will come to pass. The Lord loves us because he promised to love us and because he is faithful. Nothing will cause him to renege on that promise. There's nothing that the devil can do to make him back down on what he said he would do. He will do what he said he would do. I don't think I can say that enough today for somebody out there because somebody out there is listening and they are questioning the very character of God. You're questioning him. You're wondering if he's really the God that he say he is. Well, I'm here to tell you today, he is who he say he is. And he will always be who he say he is. Let's look at, at, at the first half of verse 23 of God's mercies. They are new every morning. Every morning, those mercies are new. When I thought about this, I reminded, I was reminded of the Israelites in the wilderness. They were in a wilderness place. Some of you out there today are in a wilderness place, but you must remember, remember, use your head for something besides doubt. Remember. Let's remember what happened for the children of Israel. How God gave them food, manna from heaven, every morning as they woke up. He never gave them enough to, to stockpile. In fact, he told them that if they would try to take more than they needed for one day, the rest was full. God is your provider. He will provide for you each and every day. The problem is so many times we have became so greedy, so greedy to what we think God ought to give us. We think God ought to just bow down to our every little wing and wing, but God is not. He is your provider. He is your Jehovah Jireh. He will provide for you. He is show, He showed Israel, the Israelites, that he was their provider, but he was not going to spoil them. Too often we've been spoiled by the cares of this world to the point that's why we don't want to believe in God. That's why we have fear and doubt and unbelief when it comes to God because we think God needs to spoil us. No, he's our provider. He knows what is best for us. He was teaching them. He was teaching them. God is trying to teach us something. God is trying, God was getting something to them, but he was also trying to teach them something. He was teaching them to trust him. God wants us to trust him. God wants us to trust him. He, want, he don't want us to put our trust in the materialistic things of life, but he wants us to put our trust in him. He is our provider. Hey, if we put all our trust in the materialistic things, why would we even need a God? Why would we even need a God? Why would we even want a God? But God is looking for his people to trust him. He is your provider. He is your way maker. God is looking for us to trust in him because he is faithful. That, that they needed not to worry. God wants you to know that you don't have to worry. You don't have to fret about where your next meal will come from. That when his promise, when he promised something, it will be as he said. 
Whatever he brought, oh my God. <laughs> Woo! I tell you, I tell you, when he promised you something, it will be as he said, just as he said. He is not going to, he's not going to, paint you a picture over here one way and it looks like a different one over here. Now it's going to be just like he said. Every time, every time, every time it's going to just be just like he said. Though the tests, though the trials, though the hard places in life, God is trying to teach us to trust him. You may be going through a hard test. You may be going through a trial. You may be going through a temptation right now that you don't think you're going to come out of that temptation. But I'm here to tell you, God is trying to get you in a place where you're trusting, where your faith will be in him and not in the problem that you're facing, not in the situation that you're facing. Sometimes we get wound up in the thing that we're going through so much, we forget. We forget. That's the reason why he called me to remind you today. He called me to remind you, hey, I am the faithful one. I am. I ain't the one that walked out on you. I ain't the one that shut the door on you. I ain't the one that gave up on you, but I'm the one that drawed you close and I keep on drawing you. I keep on drawing you. I'm keeping on drawing you. Why? Because I want you to have faith and trust in me. Who is our hope for living? Who is our hope for living? I ask myself the question, who is hope for living? My answer is his faithfulness. It's his faithfulness. It's not mine. I can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't trust in my hope. I can't trust in my faith, but I can trust in his faith because his faith will come through every time. We all struggle and we all experience hard times in life and we will experience temptations and sometimes fall to them. Sometimes we'll fall to those temptations, but, but this is because we are, in, we are a fallen creature who lives in a fallen world, but God is faithful and he will help us through these rough times on the account of Christ. He will forgive, he will forgive you when you mess up. Don't think he won't forgive you when you mess up. We all messed up. We all came short of his glory, but he still loves you. And he's still faithful to you. He's faithful to you. Your boyfriend might have walked out on you. I was talking to a woman yesterday on my job. And she was telling me after 31 years with this person, he decides to walk out on her. Well, I look over and I tell her, I know one that will never walk out on you. And his name is Jesus. Jesus will never walk out because he remains faithful. I tell you, he remains faithful even when we treat him wrong. Even when we treat him wrong, he remains faithful. <laughs> He remains faithful, even when we slap him again. Even when we bruise him again, he remains faithful. Even when we push the door upon him, he remains faithful. The apostle John writes, if we, if, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and, tr and truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, now listen to this, God who is faithful, once again, he's faithful and just will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What a gift. What a great hope and joy we have as believers. That even when we do those things against him, he's still faithful. He's still faithful. Because, because of God's faithfulness in sending his son, Jesus Christ, 
And because Jesus was faithful in being, becoming the perfect sacrifice for your sins, you can go forth every day in his grace and mercy, confident, with confidence. Of your, res of your salvation resting in his faithfulness, not yours. We can go forth and we can rest assured. We can be confident. We can be confident in his faithfulness, not ours. <laughs> what freedom this brings. What freedom this brings. To say that God is faithful to you means that he is committed to you. God is committed to you. He is steadfast. He is not one of them that will be with you today and go with someone else tomorrow. He is forever faithful to you. Devoted to you. He's devoted to you in your eternal salvation. And I don't know about you, but this gives me a lot of peace and comfort. It gives me a lot of peace and comfort because, you know, we have all been facing different tests and trials in our lives. And I feel you out there today. You may be going really, really going through. You probably said, Miss Edna, you don't understand what I'm going through. I may not understand what you're going through, but this one thing I do know is that God is faithful. And if he promised you he's going to bring you through, you're coming through. You're coming through. No doubt you're coming through. The test will be over. The test will be over. I heard in the spirit one day, the test is over. The test is over. And if he speaks it, you better, you better bank on it. It's over. It's over. I don't care what kind of evidence that the enemy think he can throw at you when he says it's over it is over but i'm here to tell you today oh my god what peace and comfort it is when i know that god is faithful to me even when i ain't been right and some of us if we just be honest we ain't been right. We ain't been right. But yet, he's been faithful. He's been faithful. That's why every day is a day of thanksgiving. When the Lord spoke to this to me in the middle of the night, I have not been able to stop thanking him for his mercy. For his faithfulness. When I'm cutting it short. Still faithful. When I'm not getting it right. He's still faithful. Somebody hear me today. He told me to remind you. So right where you are, in your mess, right where you are, stop and think of the mercy and the faithfulness of your God. I promise you, it will turn you around. I kept thanking him and thanking him. And thanking him, because I can look back and see where I was falling short in areas. And I said, Lord, you kept being there. You didn't walk away. You showed me that you were faithful. This brings me to a time in my life when God put in an assignment upon me to rise up at 3.45 in the morning, go to the church. I had to drive at least 40 minutes 
to the church to be there at 4.30 in the morning and pray and seek his face and call up on him. Stand in a gap for my leadership. Stand in a gap for my family, my friends, for those that I didn't even know, for the nations. I remember times when I didn't want to. I remember when it was pouring down raining. I remember when it was snowing outside, ice up on the streets. I remember when it was so hot, you didn't want to get out of your house from the air conditioner. But I remained faithful. And God remained faithful to me. When the hardships came, when them storms came, when them battles came that I could not fight on my own, he remained faithful to me. So what is he telling me? Remind you. Sometimes we just forget. We just forget. Or we allow the enemy to blind us to it. I think a lot of times it's us allowing the enemy to blind us to it. That he is faithful. What if you got the report? Your loved one got cancer. What if you get the report of your loved one put in prison? What if you get the report of your loved one is on drugs? What if you get the report of some loved one got molested? Will your faith still be in him? He will never leave you no matter where you are. No matter what part of your life you're in, he will never leave you. He will always be there for you. He is committed to you. He is steadfast. That means he's unmovable. He's unmovable. You can't shake him out. You can't move him out. He's faithful to you. He's devoted to you because he loves you and he's faithful. God's unfailing is unfailing in his faithfulness. He's never failed. He's never failed and he never will. God sent me today to remind you of his faithfulness. He will never be faithful. He will never be unfaithful, uncommitted, uh, unsteadfast. His faithfulness and mercies are new every day. Every day. Every day of your life. His faithfulness and his mercy is new. It's not nothing that you have to have from 20 years ago. It's new every day, every moment, every morning. His mercies are new and his faithfulness is sure. I want to just bring this. I can't really, I can, you know, we try to close stuff. I try to shut it down. But his faithfulness, you can't shut it down. But I want to say this because the words of this great hymn that I heard just describes him. It says, great is thy faithfulness. Oh, my father. There is not, there is not shadow of turning with thee. Thou changes not, thy compassion, they fail not as thou have been, 
thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand has provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Great is thy faithfulness. Hear me today. God is trying to tell you his faithfulness is near unto thee. His faithfulness is near unto thee. Know whatever you're going through. If he ever done it once, he'll do it again. He is faithful. Pastor Faye, that, that in the middle of the night, in the middle of the morning, I guess you could say, because it was early in the morning when God spoke that to me. He said, remind them. Sometimes we forget. Sometimes we, you know, when we're so con consumed with the problems and the situations that we're in, we fail, forget, fail to forget what his word says. We fail to forget. God sent me today to remind you, do not forget my word. Do not forget the words that I speak unto you. I love what limitation said, thy steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. It never stops. It never stops. His mercy never comes to an end. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is the faithfulness. Great is his faithfulness. Morning. By morning, great is thy faithfulness. Thank you, Pastor Faith, for letting me share that with the people today. And I pray today that someone out there have an ear to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying today. He is speaking to you. Do not forget. Remember, I'm faithful. Remember. He said, remember that I say what I mean, and I mean what I say. Amen. Amen. And I want to encourage us, even during the testing time, we need yes. those tests. I yes. started off saying that we need those tests so that yes. we can see whether or not we know what we say we know. Yes. We, we can say quickly, oh, I know the Lord. Uh -huh. But when the storms come and the tests come, do right. we know the Lord is faithful? Yes. When we fall, when we sin, when we come short, when we're not faithful, the enemy wants to talk to us about us. It's not about us right. and our doing. Right. It's about him and his yes. doneness because it's finished and yes. he's faithful. Right. So we need the test. Yes. Not, not just so we can go through some changes, but so that we can get established in no matter what come and what go, I yes. know he's faithful. Right. And in that place of knowing that he's faithful, we are established, we are rooted, we become steadfast and unmovable like yes. the faithful one is to us. Yes. And we become faithful to him and we right. begin to operate in faithfulness. And no matter again, what comes and what goes, we can stand and be like a tree planted by the rivers of water and not be moved or phased yes. and our joy and our hope and our peace and our health and our prosperity and our unity is not disturbed. So we right. thank God, even in this for our test says, right. give thanks always for it is the will of God that we're being tested. It is the will of God that we give thanks always. Why? Yes. Cause he's faithful. Yes. He's faithful. Yes. He's faithful. And then, like I said, the enemy wants to talk to you. But why is it we have an ear to hear so clearly and so quickly and agree with the enemy? That's it. Come that on, right man. there says we yes. don't personally know 
Right. That God is faithful. Oh, no, no. I'm not talking about no mental ascent and know how to be a great advertisement for God and see, yeah, 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 yeah. He, mm-hmm. He's faithful. He's faithful. I'm talking about we know without a shadow of a doubt, no matter yes. how many come against us, mm-hmm. we stand against all odds. Why is that? Because yes. we know mm-hmm. He's faithful. Yes. Pastor Ed, and I'm going to ask you if you will pray before we yes. get off the line. Will you, will you pray? We come against that doubt and that unbelief yes, we come against yes. it we come against it we come against the constant chatter in your ear against god it's against this character she talked about characteristics that we mm-hmm. get into that's not even ours and then we try to right. put those characteristics on god god changes not that's right so stop trying to put characteristics on god that don't belong on god watch this and you stop ex- accepting characteristics that's not yours as a new creation right Right. Come on, as we know That's his faithfulness. Exactly he, right. It establishes us. Mm-hmm. It establishes mm-hmm. us. And yes. we stop being blown and, and moved and driven with every doctrine of wind that comes along. Mm-hmm. I'm going to ask Pastor Edna to pray for us. I'm going to ask <laughs> to pray for us. And that we would repent. You know yes. what I'm saying? Repent, change our mind. We mm-hmm. said we was believers. Believers in what? Is it the faithfulness of God? Or your own faithfulness? The, is it the faithfulness of how the situation and circumstances look, looks? Or is it faith? The, is, is it we believing in the faithfulness of God? We need these tests. We yes. need these tests because they show us where we are. Right. They show us where we are in spirit mm-hmm. and in truth. They show mm-hmm. us where we are. Mm-hmm. And what we need to do is heed the test and say, whoa, I got a big F on that test. <laughs> I didn't remember. I didn't remember. Yes. I didn't yeah. remember. I didn't yes. remember. I didn't mm-hmm. remember. I did not nobody else. I didn't re- in my yes. own test. I yes. didn't remember that God was faithful. So you know what? Mm-hmm. I got another test coming. You yeah. know why? Because mm-hmm. I need to know without a shadow of a doubt for myself mm-hmm. that God is faithful. And in that place of beginning to know his faithfulness, like she said, there's Thanksgiving and the yes. joy is unspeakable. Yes. Yes, the joy is unspeakable, and the joy of the yes. Lord is our strength. Mm-hmm. We're so tired and exhausted. You know why? Because we don't know the faithfulness of God, which produces right. Thanksgiving, which produces the joy of the Lord. Yes. yes. Let me get out the way. Let me ask Pastor Edna. Will you pray? 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 Pastor Pastor Faye, so much of what even what you have just added to that is so true. It's because we. We get in the middle of these, and right now we're all been tested and all been tried. You know what I'm saying? With every, with everything that the Lord wants to do in us and through us, it's going to be tested and it's going to be tried because he's got to know that you do have faith in him, your faith in him and your trust in him, you know, not only just trusting God, but shifting on up to that next level of trust, that trust, knowing, knowing trust is, is knowing in the God that you serve. And, uh, with that, we got to remember, it's like you mentioned about the characteristics. Too often we take on these other characteristics. We embrace these other characteristics that try to come up on us, doubt, unbelief, fear, anxiety. I've never seen so many of God's people that has had to deal with that because we fail to have faith in God and know that God is faithful, knowing who he really is. And I believe that's when we even get even deeper and intimate, more intimate, when we become more intimate with him, we can know and really understand the knowing of who he is. He is who he say he is. Because in that, we learn that God is faithful and he is true. So, Today, I just say, let go of those characteristics or those characters that the enemy has allowed you to embrace. Renounce those things and allow the love of God and the peace of God and the joy of God just to overflood your soul so you can move on out into the things that God is wanting you to move into. But right now, I am going to pray. I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit. I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit for to bring to our remembrance, bring to our remembrance the things that we need to remember of our God. 
Our God is faithful. Our God is our provider. Our God is our way maker. He is everything we need. He is everything. There is not a thing that we need in life that he is not. And Lord, I thank you today, God, for this opportunity to share this, to, to just to remind someone, just to remind someone of your faithfulness, God. And God, that we will become like you as you and your father are one. Let us become one like that with you. God, that we would carry on your characteristics, that we will carry on your traits, Lord, and God, and show the world, God, your faithfulness, your faithfulness in us and through us, God. Lord, I thank you today for what you're doing, for what you're establishing, and God, how you're lifting up your people, because you bring us into a place that we will recognize God, that we will recognize your strength. We will recognize your faith. God, your faith that you have and become that faith. Let us become that faith, God, that faith that is in you. Let us become that faith, God, that we can walk in that faith and that we can talk in that faith and that we can live in that faith, God, that it changes not that it is committed, that it is steadfast, that it is unmovable. God, let us have that kind of faith, God. Let that faith be an operation in us as well, God. Lord, I thank you today for your grace and your mercy that are new every day for us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Amen. Ooh, Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you again, Pastor hallelujah. Edna. Wow. Hallelujah. May hallelujah. we begin to remember. Yes. While we're, we're remembering all the negative stuff and how we didn't come through and who didn't come through for us, may we right. shift. Yes, we shift. And come into alignment with God and in agreement yes. with God. And remember, yes. watch this, that he's faithful. And I yes. promise you, again, in yes. us remembering that he's faithful. Yes, it will purify and cleanse and strengthen our faithfulness to him. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when folk encounter us, they can encounter him right. and not a bunch of worried so-called believers, right. not a bunch of fearful, talking negative, mouth dragging the ground, mm -hmm. but, but Christians, believers yes. who yes. are full of the faithfulness of God's own faithfulness, mm -hmm. who, who are full of faith and joy Jesus. and the word of God. And I kept hearing her say, he doesn't start something and then stop. Right. Matter of fact, he sees the end from the beginning. So when he starts yes. it, it's already finished. Yeah. Did you hear that? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so why are we pulling Ooh. our hair out and, yeah. and having heart yeah. attacks, wondering mm -hmm. what the end's going to be? Mm -hmm. We need to know. He, he says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. I know the plans. They're good. Yes. They're, good. They're not evil. They're good. They're good. So we can rejoice in his mm -hmm. faithfulness. Watch this. And who he is, his plans, his thoughts, mm -hmm. and us coming into alignment with it so that we don't continue to delay right. what he desires to release. All the oh, good that he it. desires to release oh, I believe that. in our lives. And again, when I'm talking about good, Pastor Edna already touched it. We're not just talking about materialistic stuff, materialism. Right. That's, not, that's, not, that's not it. You can have all of that and your yes. soul still be lost that's in right. the midst of the deception and the darkness and yes. the unfaithfulness and the negativity. Yes. Amen. About transformation, sanctification, mm -hmm. again, the joy of the Lord, his peace, his, yes. his shalom, so that no matter yeah. what's going on around you, you're at peace. Yes. You're at peace. Yes. Thank you, Pastor so Edna, Thank for you. hearing from the Lord and then giving us mm -hmm. what the Lord said, give us. He says to remind yeah. us to remember yes. His faithfulness. To remember so as we do that, look, don't go back on, well, I wasn't faithful Tuesday. Well, I was faithful Wednesday. Well, I wasn't faithful. He's not talking about your faithfulness. That's right. Oh, not God. your faithfulness. He is going to bring about the yes. change. Watch this. Yes. That we need. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. I rejoice Amen. in his word. I rejoice in his wisdom. Yes. Yes. And I rejoice in you. Thanks for joining us again for another Planting the Heavens <laughs> in the Earth so that we yes. can experience his kingdom come. Yes. And his will being done as in heaven, even so in earth. There's no worry and anxiety in heaven. That's right. <laughs> no, defeat, no unfaithfulness. No come on. That's come right. On.
That's that right. is our birthright and our inheritance to it mm-hmm. and to experience it even here and now. Yes. God bless. Remember, God is faithful. Remember, God is yes. faithful. faithful. Remember, mm. God is faithful. He is that. Morning by morning. Yes. That gets me too, Pastor Edna, because it's mm-hmm. the, 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 the brand new mercies that he gives mm-hmm. me this morning. Yeah. They're not leftovers from yesterday. That's right. They're not the same. I said to the Lord, I said, why would you do that? I said, because anything you gave me even yesterday, years yeah. ago, generations mm-hmm. ago, it's mm-hmm. still as potent as it was when you first gave it to me. He said, it's not yes. good enough for you. Yeah. And every time I read that passage or hear that passage, it reminds me of somebody who has gotten up early in the morning and they're in there fixing fresh baked bread for yes. all on their face they got the apron on and yeah. morning by morning he says it's not, by it's morning. not fresh i've yes. got something fresh for you every day why would you do that god yes I'm faithful i love yes. you i'm devoted to you look how faithful wow. he was to the children of israel morning by morning morning by morning he brought them fresh manna every morning he didn't bring, he didn't gather up what they didn't get that day before and serve them secondhand bread. He gave them new bread every morning. Every morning. New and how blessings, much more does he want to do under the new covenant? New strength, new life, every day, fresh, new. Fresh. Fresh, new. Fresh. fresh. Oh, I love that. I, I mean, it just, it just. It's like you said, it brought the joy to my spirit because, you know, when you battle, sometimes you become battle worn, but when you battle and you hear that fresh word, that fresh manna from God and God was reminding me of himself, he was reminding, it was an intimate moment. It was a very intimate moment because he was saying, remind you, I want to remind you of who I am, of who I am. Remind yourself who I am. Just remind yourself. You know, that, that right there just gives me so much joy, just reminding myself. I'm not just speaking it out to you, but I am reminding myself that he is faithful. Look out, girl. He is faithful. (laughs) I love him. I love him. I love him. All right. Praise God. Praise God. Listen, we invite you, share this on your page if you'd like. Somebody else that might be in your group of friends needs to be reminded to remember God's faithfulness. Yeah. And like she said, he doesn't walk away. He promised never to leave us or forsake us. Right. He doesn't walk away when we mess up and when we tow up from right. the flow up. He's faithful. Yes. He's faithful. faithful Share this on your page. Somebody needs to know that, that, that God is faithful and he has not left them and that the test is just to prove them and establish them mm. in his faithfulness. Yes. God bless. Thank you again for joining us. See you again next time.